This is the notes for section 12, 1, Size Transformation Revisited. If you haven't done so already, make sure that you read the section before continuing on. Um, this first activity that I have in, in your notes, you should have already done in class. If you haven't, make sure you do it before you come to class next time. I'd like to start by looking at how we've already defined size transformation um, back in an earlier chapter. We looked at, uh, back in 3.7, we looked at size transformation, and I have it highlighted how we defined it at that time. We said the transformation that maps a point x, y onto kx, ky was called the size transformation or size change with center 0, 0 and magnitude k, or s sub k for short. So back when we looked at it in chapter 3, we were looking at it just strictly from a coordinate axis. Today, what we'd like to do is extend it beyond the coordinate plane to to any to a size change transformation anywhere. So now let's take a look at a new definition of size change, but this time instead of looking at it at a coordinate axis, let's look at it as we can use any center point, any magnitude, any size change factor. I'm going to read the definition. And I'm going to try and break that down. It says, let O be a point and K be the non-zero real number. For any point P, let S of P equal P prime be the point on line OP with OP prime equal to K OP, or K times OP. In the direction of OP, the ray OP that is, if K is positive, and the direction of the opposite of OP, that ray if k is negative. Then s is a size change or size transformation with center zero, excuse me, center O, and magnitude or size change factor of k. Alright, let's see if we can break that down a little bit. So when I do a size change, I need a few things. I need to know what is the center point. Okay. We're saying in this definition, we're going to define it as a point O. O can be anywhere. Okay. We need a magnitude, and the magnitude is your k value. Okay, whatever that k number is, that's going to be your magnitude. And then we need a direction. So what we're saying with the direction is that if we take any point p and we do a size change on that point, if the size change is positive, well, it doesn't matter what the size change is. Um, the the um, point, the 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 image point, will always be on the line containing the center point and the point that we're trans that we're doing the size transformation on, and it will be in the direction from the center towards that point if it's positive and it will be in the opposite direction of that if it's negative. Okay? So, for instance, if this is my point O and this is my point P, it will be in this direction if it's positive and it will be in this direction if it's negative. So when we're looking at a size transformation, we really want to think about three things. What is my center point? What is the magnitude of the transformation? In other words, how much bigger or how much smaller is it going to get? And in what direction will that, that uh, figure be going? Okay. Well, let's talk a little bit more about that magnitude piece. Okay. And the magnitude is... Um, basically how much bigger or smaller the, the, the figure is going to get. So if that k value, if the absolute value of it is greater than 1, so it's either greater than 1 or, or less than negative 1, my figure is going to get bigger. Okay? It's going to have an expansion. If it's between 0 and 1, I'm going to have a contraction or my figure is going to get smaller. So any number between 0 and 1 or 0 and negative 1, my figure is going to get smaller. Remember, the negative just determines the direction, same with the positive. 
And then finally, if k is equal to 1, I have an identity transformation. In other words, if k is equal to 1, it's, it's not going to change. It's going gonna, it's gonna to remain exactly the same as it is. All right, let's take a look at this example here. It says, uh, in the figure below, g equals s sub k of f. Now, that means that g is the image of f under a size change with a magnitude of k. Okay? It says, find the center and the, and the magnitude of that size change. So to do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to first find the center by drawing lines through pairs of corresponding points on the image and the preimage. So, for instance, if I were to look at this point right here, it corresponds with this point right here. So I'm going to draw a line between those two points. And I can do it with any pairs. You know, we get this one and this one, but I think these two are a little bit easier to do, so let's work with those two. So I've got two pairs of points. I'm going to draw lines through those two pairs of points, and where those two lines intersect, that will be our center point. So I've drawn in those two pairs of lines, and you can see their intersection point is right here. So that would be my center. We'll call that O. Okay. Now to find the magnitude, I need to, to that basically I'm finding the value of k. And to find k, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at, um, and, and it's always image over preimage. So I'm going to find a distance for the image over the distance for the preimage. So if that's the case, I'm going to measure the distance. I'm going to call this. Um, uh, let's just call this A here, and we'll call this B. So if I look at the distance from um, O to A, that's my image distance. So I'm going to put that distance on top. And if I look at the distance from O to B, that would be a pre-image distance. So I'm going to put that distance on bottom. So I'm going to measure those two distances. Now, my, my, my measurements might be a little different than yours, so you'd want to do this on yours as well. Um, but no matter what, they should still come out to be about the same thing here. So on mine, now once again, mine is going to be a little different than yours, but on mine, it's the OA distance is about 1 inch, and the OB distance is about 3 inches. Okay, Therefore, my value of K would be one-third. So we have found the magnitude and we found the center of that um, size transformation. You'll notice because my k value is positive, the size transformation was in the direction from O towards um, figure F. It didn't end up over here on this side of O. It ended up between O and F. That's always going to happen when you have well, I'm sorry, it's going to be in the direction from O towards F um, if, if your k value is positive. All right, with our new definition for a size transformation, the, the previous definition when we were working with it just on a coordinate plane now becomes just a theorem or just a, 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 a piece of that definition. So it says uh, S sub k, the transformation S sub k that maps x, y onto k, x, k, y with k not equal to 0 is a science transformation S with center 0, 0 and magnitude k. So that's just what we were doing before, uh, except before we had to have k values that were positive. Now we're saying k could be any value. Um, next, the size change preservation um, properties theorem. Basically, we. Before, when we were working with um, isometries, we looked at the ABCD, or angle measure between this collinear and in distance. Well, three of those will be preserved under size transformations, not the fourth. So angle measure between this and collinearity are all still preserved, but distance is not. Okay. So then how, how is distance related to this? Well, 
the way that we can look at that is that size change distance theorem kind of ex explains that for us. It says under any size change with magnitude k not equal to zero, the distance between any two points is the absolute value of k times the distance between their pre-image points. So this idea that um, in a size change, instead of distance being um, the you know uh, preserved, uh, the distance between pre-image and image points that ratio is what's preserved. Okay, so um, the distance between Q and P, um, and the distance between Q prime and P prime. Q prime, P prime will be K times whatever the distance is between Q and P. All right, let's look at this next example, number two here. It says, suppose S is a size transformation of magnitude 0.45. If triangle MNP has a perimeter of 84 centimeters, find the perimeter of the size change image of MNP. Well, so what we're saying then is that MNP is my, my pre-image, okay? Put a PI by that. And this, the value that I'd get after the, the um, size change transformation would be the image, okay? Um, we know that their perimeters are related as the, the image is k times the distance on the pre-image. So if I take a pre-image distance, I multiply it by k, I'll get an image distance. Well, we have a pre-image distance of 84. If I take that value times k, which is 0.45, I'll have the image perimeter. So if I do that multiplication, I get 37.8. Therefore, the perimeter would be 37.8 centimeters on the image. Okay, here's a summary of some of the basic properties of size changes. When we do size change, betweenness and collinearity are preserved. Therefore, the image of a line will always be a line, okay? Or a line segment will be a line segment, etc. Um, if we look at all corresponding lines, rays, uh, line segments, they'll always be parallel to each other. So the image line and the pre-image line will be parallel to each other or ray or ray or segment or segment. Okay, And number three, if a size change multiply distance by the absolute value of the size change magnitude. <coughs> so the distance between two points on G will be K times the corresponding distance between two points on F. So if I look at the pre-image distance and the image distance. The image distance will always be k times whatever the pre-image distance is. Okay, And then the last theorem that we have there is the figure size change theorem. Um, and we've, we've done some work with this, but not from a size change standpoint. We looked at it um, when we were doing any other transformations. But when I do a figure size, train, size change um, theorem, it just says that if a figure is determined by certain points, then its size change image is the corresponding figure determined by the size change image of those points. So basically what that allows us to do is if we have whatever points make up that figure, if we, if we do the transformation on those points, we could just redraw the figure.